This is the On All Cylinders Podcast. Powered by Summit Racing. Your host for today is Summit Racing's Paul Sokolis. With special guest, two-time top alcohol funny car champion, Doug Gordon. Here we go. Hi there, welcome to another installment of the On All Cylinders Podcast. Paul Sokolis here doing your hosting duties. And over the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about uh, what's feeding the next generation of gearheads. From Formula SAE, Baja SAE, to Drag Illustrated's 30 Under 30 program, how are we getting the next generation of mechanics, racers, enthusiasts into this automotive world we all know and love? And today we're kind of continuing on that theme because we've got uh, two-time NHRA top alcohol funny car champ Doug Gordon on the show. And in addition to being a, a really competitive racer and all-around good guy, Doug's built himself a, a family race team. And I mean that in the most literal sense of the word, from his father to his daughters. His family plays a massive role in his success, and he will do a far better job explaining that family dynamic than I ever will. So I'll just shut up and introduce him now. <laughs> Doug, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no, stoked to be on the on the, your show here. Well, we're just happy to have you on, because what two better topics to talk about? Families and racing, right? So that said, let's just uh, start this interview at the ground floor. Can you tell us about uh, how you got into racing and what attracted you to, to motorsports and cars and, and things like that? So basically, uh, my parents uh, were racing. My dad raced uh, circle track stuff when he was um, a kid, or when I, by the time I was born, they were racing sand drag. So it's a hundred yards uh, in dirt, you know. And um, the sand drag deal started kind of dying off. There wasn't enough cars, so um, they looked at going into the drag racing. And the slowest car that we could, or the only car we could find that was a heads up class that was a professional class was the alcohol funny car class at the time. And it's still kind of the case. So 1986, I bought a old Tom McEwen car. So it was a shortened about a foot to get it to fit in the trailer. So we, uh, we extended it, made it 125 inch wheelbase and, um, started racing that and been doing it ever since. But your father was driving in the beginning. So when did you jump in the driver's seat? So my dad drove from 1986 until through 1993. I got my license at the end of 1993. My first full season was 1994. So this year will be my 30th year of driving, technically. So tell us a bit more about that. Um, you were working on the car and your father's team before taking his place in the driver's seat. Can you describe that transition, perhaps, and uh, maybe even talk a bit more detail about the family dynamic? Yeah. So, I mean, we just, we've raced as a family, you know, for all my, all my career, you know, it was my, my mom and my dad and me, you know, and, um, you know, as in the younger stages and we had other people that came and helped us to, to make a full crew, you know, as the years went on. But, uh, you know, I was, so I've always been on the, you know, the, the working end of the car and stuff, you know, so it was as young as worked on the car and then dad drove it. And then now I work on the car and I drive it, you know, but we all just work on to make it all together. But, uh, you know, it developed uh, from the time I was 12, you know, doing this logging and doing certain things that by the time I was 16, I was starting to build motors. And um, by the time I was probably 20, I could do anything and everything on the car. You know, so we just um, just been just been doing that for for our whole career. And um, my wife started coming when I got married. You know, my wife started coming a little bit and we had kids and it was a little hard to for the for her to come to the races and stuff with the kids and hard for the kids to come. So they would come seldomly you know here and there that wanted to always come but just it was hard to make the whole thing work out so we did what we could but um as the years went on they got more and more into it. we started running junior dragsters and stuff so they got more into drag racing and then um you know and actually covid was the big turning point for us it was actually as much as it was a bad thing it was actually a good thing for our family um the girls were at the time i think 15 and 17 and maybe 14 to 16 somewhere in that area and um they were not going to school and so it was like well we're going racing you could go racing and so we decided they ended up going on the road went to a few races with us and stuff and then next thing you know they became the sole crew so they took over all the jobs that the other guys that were crew members that we had working on the car they took over all those things and um now it's a uh, all family crew so yeah, maybe now is a good time to talk about your daughters. Both Maddie and Macy Gordon are very much into the motorsports community. Talk about that. Um, was it their idea to to get more involved in drag racing, or did they need some encouragement? No, it was their idea. You know, and like I say we've always they've always been in the race car shop with us. You know, so every Saturday we work on the race car. If we're home. We're working on the race car on Saturdays. So they've always been there working on it, wanting to learn. You know, and stuff. You know, but. 
they're girls, you know, so you think, yeah, they don't really want to do it too much. But I mean, honestly, I say they're just uh, boys in a girl's body and uh, they just love um, they love drag racing. And um, so they just they, they really wanted to do it. I So at first I thought, well, shoot, I'll take one of them on the road with me. Then one can stay home with mom. And then, you know, and then then I think we did that maybe one race. And then it's like, no, we're both going. So then we did the both of them going and mom stayed home for a couple of races. And she's like, well, this isn't working out because I don't want to be home by myself. So then she came along and I say, then we just started putting her to work. And she's a cosmetologist, hairdresser, lives in the in the fancy, pretty world and all the stuff, you know, so had nails from the time she was 16 years old. And once she started, once we started putting her to work on the funny car, it's like, well, brake clean, you know, that wears off all the nail polish. And she's like, I just can't have nails anymore. You know, I don't know how this, but she's, she's made it all work out. It's uh, it's pretty phenomenal what we get to do together now. Yeah, that certainly sounds like a, a pretty special setup. But let's rewind just a moment because all this started while well, you and your father were working together on, on the same team. Can you explain how that father and son dynamic worked? And then maybe talk about how that experience with your father has translated in the way you work around your daughters. You know, my father is very, very patient and very, he really likes to explain things and how to, how to make things work and why you do things a certain way. I'm a little bit more impatient to some extent where, you know, when I'm training and stuff, I'm kind of like, Hey, just do it this way. And let's just, let's roll, you know? And, uh, but he's like, Hey, do we do it this way? This is why we do it. And he's, so he's really into training and stuff. And so he, he trained me as a kid and we said everything we did, you know, there was never any weekends that we weren't working on something, you know? So it was just like, so we learned how to work on anything and everything that there, that there ever was. And then, um, you know, so, He's done a lot with that with my kids too. I say I do it with my kids, you know, but I say I'm just not quite as good as him. But he really, I mean, at the race car shop, we have mills and lathes and welders and, you know, brakes and presses and all different kinds of stuff to make and do anything. So he's taken the time and taught the girls. I mean, Macy knows how to run the lathes. She knows how to run the mill. So it's like, hey, if we're going to mill something, lay something, say, hey, Macy, you can go over there and do that. Madison knows how to do a little bit, but Madison's really into the welding end of it. So she can weld, she can, you know, use the bend and the, the brake and the press and the shear and all that kind of stuff. So she's more into that side. Macy's more into the machining side of it. And, uh, but I say dad just really teaches them on that. And I say that I've, I've taken the time to teach Macy how to build motors and stuff, you know, so she's, um, she's, she can build a motor from a bare block to a, a complete ready to race engine. Um, but I say going back, dad is uh, very patient, very, very good teacher. And you try your best to mimic that? <laughs> I try my best. And I say, I, I probably do pretty well, but I say, I know I just don't do as well as him. He just, and they say he's something he's developed over time. You know, he has more time now, you know, in his life. So he has more time to have patience. And, you know, I'm always kind of like, hey, we got a junior race this weekend. We got this race this weekend. We got really got so many hours left in the day. We got a lot of things to get done. So we got we to hurry. It's kind of how we lead our life, unfortunately, because fortunately and unfortunately, but when we race as much as we do, it's just, Kind of fact of life. Well, what, whatever you're doing, it, it's obviously working because, as we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, you are a two-time NHRA Top Alcohol Funny Car Champion. So let's dive into that aspect for a bit. Like, can you talk about your first big win, or um, was there ever a moment where you sat in the car and said, "Whoa, whoa, I, I may have it. I'm, I'm pretty good." Well, when I first started getting into it, so basically in uh, the 1993, I got my license. And um, so the early 90s was a, we're in construction. So we, we do cabinets for residential houses is our main is our main business. And in the early 90s was a slow time in the economy for housing. Um, so at that point, dad kind of thought that this might be our last our last year, 1994. So he says, hey, son, you want to drive? It's time my dad's only 45 years old or whatever, and I was 18. He said, hey, do you want to you want to drive the funny car? Because he wanted to give me a shot. I had been just like my girls where I'd been in the race car shop with him. Just whatever you need, dad, I'm there to help you and stuff for, for you know, just lived and breathed racing. So he gave me the shot, planning on probably being able to race a year and then we were going to be done. I drove, you know, I got my license in six runs and I was able to pick up the trait pretty quick. So and I drove pretty well and I was really good on the tree um, back in the day. I was uh, what Sean Bellamere is today. Um, and I'd say I could just, you know, I could, I could wear out most people on the tree. I didn't, I didn't get uh, left on pretty much never has changed over the years, but, uh, you know, so, but, but I was, but I was good at it. So it, it, it turned into 
turned into going, you know, dad's like, Hey, well, we started having more fun and the economy started picking back up. And the one year turned into more and more and more because we were doing well and it was fun and it was worth spending the money on. And, uh, but I won my first race in 1996 at Sacramento, which we were just at last week and with the girls running dragsters and Macy won there, but won my first race there in 1996. And we were always a decent car. I mean, we were never, I mean, they say we've always decided to tune it ourselves. We never, We've had we've hired a few tuners here and there to help us. Like we're lost, we need to get back, you know, in the round. But uh, we were never a car to compete for a championship. We were compar- a car to compete for a division championship and win some races here and there. But I mean, on average, we would maybe win a race a year uh, or maybe a race every couple of years. But as the years went on, we started different motor combinations and different things. But in 2014, um, I we had already we had won on maybe. I don't know, probably four or five national events, maybe quite a few division races, maybe 12, 15 of those. We won the All-Stars in 2008 against Frank Madsen. So that was probably the, the highlight of my career up until up until recently. But in uh, 2014, we decided we swapped over from a Minor Brothers to an Allen Johnson AJPE motor. That was really the turning point in our stuff. And uh, Allen kind of helped us out. He taught us a lot of things about how to be a good racer, not necessarily how to make the car go fast, but how you think about things and how do you do things to be good, how you keep the logs and how you do different things and how to race like a professional. And uh, that was a big turning point in our life or in our career. And by the time 2017, 2018 came, we were a top, top three, four, five car. And still probably not ever thought of winning a world championship, but knew that we could compete for top 10 for sure. And that first top alcohol funny car championship came in 2020? Yeah. So the first one came in 2020, which, um, you know, was with the girls working on the car, you know, and um, obviously a huge deal. Um, but it was a, um, you know, it was a, it was a shortened season. And, you know, so it was like, you know, it was, there was always technically an asterisk next to 2020, even though, hey, we got the. We got the trophy up here to, to show for it and stuff, you know, but at the same point, it's, you know, there's probably to some people's mind is an asterisk, but uh, we did what we did well. We ran good. We won a lot of races and we did what needed. We did better than anybody else that season. So it was, uh, but the bummer part about that one was it was COVID's year. So we have a crew of these pretty girls and then these, uh, you know, these couple other dudes and be, be my dad. And, uh, it would have been nice to dress them all up and take them to this banquet, you know, but of course there was no banquet and stuff. So that was, that was a downer, you know, we got an ice chest and a, a jacket and, you know, some stuff, but in this big trophy, uh, but I really wanted to win it again to be able to go to the banquet, you know, so but I didn't know if it ever happened, but, um, but that was always a, that was a goal of mine. But I'm guessing that asterisk on 2020 kind of goes away when you turn around and win it again in 2022, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, no. And that was, I'd say we, we once again ran good. I mean, the, the, the competition was phenomenal, you know, last year, you know, it was coming down to Vegas with four guys still, still had a chance at it. Uh, Shane Westerfield really was running away early in the year. And then of course, you know, with our crash, uh, that was, you know, just devastating and whether or not we could even get a car back together and then whether or not it was going to be able to run and then whether or not it was a lot of, you know, unforeseen, you know, at that point. So but we, but we did get back together. We, uh, you know, once again, my dad taking the time and the effort to, you know, I wanted to get back by, by Reading. And I'm like, hey, I think we can get back by Reading. And I'm like, no, we're going to do this right. We're going to make sure every detail is perfect and we're not going to shortcut anything. We're not, you know, we'll get back there when we get back there. And so we got with the schedule left. We had St. Louis, we had Dallas, we had um, two Vegas's, Pomona. I'm like, well, Technically, we've got five wins already. If we can win the rest of all those five races, we'll be the champ. You know, but that would not mean we'll have a perfect season. Well, I mean, the odds of coming out with a new car and winning the next five races in a row is going to be very slim. And the other thing was, was we went into this um, knowing that the car basically was unstable at the end of the track. And that's uh, the big reason why it crashed. So we went into it saying, hey, we're going to put downforce on the car. And we don't care if it goes slow. It's going to be safe. So once we put the downforce on the car, we're like, it might be slow and we may not be competitive anyways. But we did put the downforce on the car and uh, we went to St. Louis and struggled a little bit on the first two runs. But by the middle of the weekend, we had it figured out and we ran, I think, 542 at 271 or 272. And I mean, the car was mean and was like, whoa, we got a shot. We won that one. And then we got beat on a whole shot by Hool at uh, Dallas with his 003 light. And 
I only lost by two or three thousand, I think. But then we came back and won both Vegas's and went to the final Pomona. And, and then we got to get the girls all dressed up and pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so now that that uh, championship 2022 season is officially in the books, from what I understand, your daughters are stepping up to be a bigger part of your race team. Is that correct? No, for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, say, and they, they are a huge part of the team. You know, I say this right now, it doesn't run without them. Basically, the way we've got it set up right now, Madison does all the clutch work. Uh, so between rounds, I mean, she pulls the clutch out of it, changes the clutch pack and puts a new one in, puts transmission in and all the stuff every round. Um, Macy, uh, does the motor. So she, she, her and Christina pull the valve covers off. They adjust the valves. And, uh, in the meantime, I'll jump down and pull the oil pan down. When Macy's done adjusting the valve, she jumps down with me. We do, we, we pull down all the main, uh, mains, check the main bearings, pull down all the rod caps, check the rod bearings, and then slap that stuff back up. And then, uh, once we're done with that, then Macy will do the oil and fuel and Christina will be buttoning up the valve covers and the rest of that. And uh, my mom's there packing the parachutes and uh, doing the other the other little things that you be done. And then dad's working on the computer trying to figure out how to make it go fast. They are a huge part of the team. And they say between races, you know, we get back, we got a blown up motor, we got a whatever. It's like, okay, make sure you get on the motor, you know, get that thing torn apart, get studs out. We'll get this other block, start putting studs in it. We'll start put that one together. And, uh, you know, then I'll work on whatever other stuff needs to be done. Without them, we're not a team. Uh, uh, that's just incredible. I mean, you take the family racing team idea to the nth degree, it sounds like. Yeah, no, it is. And I, mean, I say, and to be able to compete, you know, it's one thing to just race as a family, but to be able to compete at it in the uh, fashion that we do. And I say a lot of teams that we're racing against, uh, let's say Bartone's team, for instance, I mean, that team is a... Uh, not a professional team, but it's basically a, a, you know, a near professional team. And they say super great people, you know, and stuff, but they've picked and choose the best people from around. They got, they, you know, chose the best crew chief from Chicago, chose the best driver from LA and chose the great, the best car crew chief from Oklahoma and chose the best, you know, uh, another guy from New York and then, you know, two guys from Oregon. And I mean, it's like their hand choosing, Hey, these are, these are the, these are the great ones. And we can, with all these help, we can, create a, uh, a dream team and uh, and they have a dream team. They are a phenomenal team, you know, but I say for us to be able to compete against them and stuff is, is, is a pretty good feeling. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, one of your daughters is transitioning to the driver's seat kind of like you did, right? So that's correct. So basically, um, Madison is my oldest daughter. So she's 19 right now. And then we got Macy. So both of them, you know, ran junior dragsters. Um, they're both phenomenal drivers. They've got a ton of wins. Um, and they're, you know, both phenomenal what they do. Uh, but Madison uh, really had the desire to drive the funny car, just like I did when I was a kid. At times we've thought about it like, hey, baby, am I really, should I really be done at this point? I can still drive pretty good. We're still able to win championships. We're still competitive and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, you know, my dad gave me a shot when I was 18 years old. And sometimes I, I don't think there's anybody who likes drag racing more than me, but sometimes I debate whether or not Madison actually likes drag racing more than me. But, but at the same time, she's a girl and, uh, you know, I want her to have babies. I want her to have family. I want her to do those things that, um, you should can't do as it while you're driving an alcohol funny car. So if she starts now, then hopefully we can get six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years or whatever of drag racing and then, she can get out of the driver's seat enough to go have babies and stuff and um, do that stuff. But we did take her to Bakersfield uh, here in California a couple weeks ago. Track was way too hot. It was like we thought it was going to be in the 80s and up being around 100. Track temperatures were almost 150, and we just couldn't get the car down the track. But she did a phenomenal job. I kind of wanted to think about making sure she could do it before we really um, threw her out there into the into the wolves next year. But after this after this session at Bakersfield, the way she handled the tire shake and the tire spin and the whole procedures and stuff, I have no doubt she's going to be able to do it and do a great job at it. So the plan is um, Pomona at the end of the year. That'll be my final uh, my final you know hit in the car. Hopefully it'll be holding a, another world championship, but, uh, you know, that's yet to be seen. We'll see how that goes. I'm not counting my chickens and uh, that's just, you know, something of a dream, you know, but at the same time, um, uh, once the, once Pomona's done, then uh, I'll turn over the keys. She's going to jump in and she'll be the driver and um, I'll drive one of these, uh, these super comp cars that we got over here. I'll swap her seats. Now, this may be more of a philosophical question, but can you speak to how your, your daughters have grown as young adults away from the racetrack as a result of their experience in drag racing? 
Yeah. So for Macy in particular, she's my youngest daughter. For her in particular, she was a kid who didn't have a lot of self-confidence. You know, she when we got her into school, we brought her into school. We she was marginal what year she could start school. We started her as a later year because she was like, eh, she was just marginally you know, not a lot of confidence. And um we put her in softball, we put her in soccer, we put her in cheerleading. She couldn't do any of them because it was too scary. It was just like it was too much. It was mom needed to be standing by me on the field for me to uh, for this to work. We Madison started junior drag racing and uh, she was she's fearless. I'm she just jumps in. I'm ready. I'm going, you know, and then so then when Macy was going to get into it, she wanted to do it. But we got her in the car. We took it out on the side road here by our house. And it was like, OK, we're going to fire it up. We're going to run it. And she got all suited up and stuff. And she's excited. And then it was like, OK, hit the gas. And then she's sitting there and I'm like, hey, babe, hit the gas. And she's sitting there. And all of a sudden the tears are coming down her face. And she's just like, she couldn't do it. It was too much. You could not touch the throttle. It was just too much. Too scary. Finally, we decided, hey, we're going to sell the car. And this is just not for her. I put it for sale and had this other girl that came to look at it. My wife's at work. So this little girl comes. She's like five years old, going to come buy this car. And I look at the little girl. And I'm like, mm, no, dude, she's too small. I mean, I'm not going to sell you the car. She's too small for this. And he's like, okay. So I told Macy, I says, hey, that girl is five years old. She was going to drive it. You wouldn't even drive it? <laughs> so I kind of shamed her. So I, I rolled it out of the garage, put it up on the jack stand. I fired it up. I'll say, look, it's sitting there. It's running. It doesn't do anything. It's by itself. It can't hurt anything. You know, I said, get in it. So she, she stepped in it while I was running. She sat in it and she, and we finally shut it off. She said, oh, it wasn't that bad, dad. I'm like, okay. So I said, Hey, I'm flying to Topeka tomorrow morning. So I said, when I get back, I'll be back on, I'll be back on Monday. If you still want to try this on Monday, then we'll take it out to the to the the little road over here and we'll try it out. So we we did it. We idled it up and down this the road for like three tanks of fuel, and then we let her hit the gas and do all stuff, and she was good to go. So like, okay, I called Mike Rice. I'm like, hey, dude, we got to get a license. We got to get all stuff. There's a race this weekend in Fontana. Now this is Monday night or Tuesday morning, basically. There's a race this weekend in Fontana. We need to get her into it. He's like, okay, I'll get all the stuff. We get all all the stuff done real quick. We go to Fontana. She wins the race. <laughs> and from that point on, and it was funny because we're up against in the final, which was a friend of ours to this day now. He wasn't then. We didn't know who he was. But his name was Dylan Hegwood. And he was a bigger kid. And Macy's like, I have to race him. And she's this little tiny girl. Like, I have to race him. And we're like, hey, you're not wrestling him. You're racing him. You know? <laughs> so, uh, but she won. I mean, she had like 032 to his 038 light in the final. And I mean, she won the race. But honestly, she ended up going on the rest of that the, that year and the following year. The following year, she actually won almost every race she was in. I think she won like nine out of 11 races. We had like one of the highest points totals ever in junior racing points history. But what that did is it built like so much confidence for her. And she, so with that said, I mean, that she is one of the most confident, I'd say now in the funny car stuff, my dad trips on it all the time, but we go, we're at the starting line and it's pressure, you know? They're like, hey, oh my God, we need to change the tire pressure. We need to change the tire pressure. And Macy's like, okay, I got it. And she just goes over. She's got it. She just does it. And she's and like, so I'm like frantic. Dad's frantic, you know. But Macy's like, she's calm, cool, collective. She doesn't get frazzled. I got it. She just gets it done. And um, I say, she's just, it really has done a lot for her. Madison, uh, I think it has too, but she's always been a confident. She's a confident in, in so many different worlds. But I mean, she's obviously developed a ton of skills. Going back a few years ago, you know, when Dave, she was probably 10, she looks over at her grandma's car and she goes, Grandma, you got a low front tire, you know? And so, you know, she just, you know, it's just <laughs> this little girl telling this grown up, you know, that their car, but she understands cars and understands uh, everything about mechanics and stuff uh, just because of just being involved in, in what we do day to day. Now, both of your daughters are still relatively young. Um, do you envision them pursuing careers in racing or motorsports as they enter adulthood? You know, I don't, I don't know. You know, so Madison's, uh, you know, working with me at the cabinet shop now. You know, I foresee her probably just staying there and doing that and doing the racing the way we do it. I mean, we, we race as for fun as a hobby. We, um, you know, it's not profession for us. You know, we work a normal day job and then, you know, we jam to the races as late as we can, you know, leave work as late as we can, jam to the races and we jam home. We were in Sacramento last weekend. We got home at one o'clock in the morning and we unloaded the motor home and got done unloading motor home till two. And then we went to sleep and then got up at six because Macy had finals and, I, you know, we had to be and Maddie had to go to work. Christine had to go to work. 
you know, then we've got um, another race coming up here shortly too. So that being said, I don't, um, I don't know if they'll pursue more stuff. I think they're, they're probably going to want to race something forever to some extent, whether it's uh, alcohol funny car, or whether it's uh, top dragster, super comp drag racing. I see him being involved in it, but you never know. I don't. Uh, yeah. That's and Macy's uh, Macy's just getting ready to finish her. She'll be uh, going to senior year next year, high school. So she's trying to figure out what she wants to do. She was singing CPA. She was singing this, but uh, I, you know, we'll just have to see, see where that, where it goes. I don't know, really know. Let's rack the focus out just a little bit. Speaking as a highly successful racer yourself, what do you think of the current state of drag racing? Well, I mean, the current state in general of drag racing, I, I, I feel like it's in a, in a good spot. Um, the alcohol funny car class, you know, has been in a struggle as of the last few years. That's something that NHRA has been working on a lot, and I've been working with them a lot, and a lot of other people have been working with them a lot, too. Um, coming up with different ideas, different ways to try to fill up the class. Um, I feel like, hopefully, the A-Fuel funding card deal is going to be something that will really kind of kick in and stuff. But I know it's going to take a couple of years, probably, for the whole thing. they got to get a couple of them or one or two of them to get out there and show that they're competitive and stuff. But, I, you know, my opinion is the alcohol funding card today is maybe almost too hard to drive for the regular person. So they don't want to jump into it, into something that's they can't be competitive at. So everybody wants instant gratification. So it's hard to jump into an alcohol funding car and have instant gratification because it's just a difficult car. But when you turn it into an A-Fuel funny car, I think it's going to be an easier car. So I think that uh, like Randy Meyer and Nick Phillips and all these people are renting out these dragsters. I hope that eventually they'll want to rent out funny cars. And I, I see people want to drive funny cars, you know, so I think that that will transition into a growing end of it. Uh, it might take away from some of the dragsters, but um, you know, right now they're, they're flourishing right now. So I think that they're, you know, some could come our way and still keep both of them going pretty well. So, but the whole state of drag racing, man, you go to see some of these spring flings and some of these other, you know, things that are going on, just uh, enormous amounts of cars and, uh, and fantastic drag racing and, uh, and the pros right now at NHRA are doing great. Um, so I, I feel like drag racing is uh, really doing really well and um, something that, you know, that we're going to be able to follow for a lot of years. Now you hinted to us a little bit about your plans after the Pomona race this year. Do you feel comfortable elaborating on, on where you see your career going after uh, you transition out of the driver's seat? You know, I say once, you know, I, I look at, uh, you know, the alcohol funny car class in general as being a very big team class. If you go back to like super comp racing, you know, the it's uh, more of a drive, super comp's more of a driver, you know, the drivers, you know, running the, the stripe and running the you know, starting line. And then those are basically where you're going to win and lose races. The alcohol funny car is a total team. Yeah, there's one person that gets to drive the car and he gets all the you know, all the interviews with you and all that kind of stuff, you know, but the, the reality of it, it's a total team effort. So um, we're just going to swap seats, uh, you know, so we're all going to be doing all the same stuff. We're all going to be saying the same part of the same team that's winning, losing, you know, in each race. But I'm going to be on the starting line, jumping up and down and, you know, excited with everybody. Instead of being at the other end, uh, you know, when you went around, you're like, ah, and then you look around and there's nobody around to, to, to uh, have excitement with, except for the other guy that you just beat. So he just, he's not really excited for you, you know? So, but I say it's a, it's a team, it's a team thing. I say, but I say nothing's really going to change other than, you know, she's going to be driving and, uh, as opposed to me. Um, and I say, then we're going to swap it up a little bit on our, you know, I say we do, we do have these dragsters that the girls are driving. Once we got done with the uh, junior dragsters, we, Bought a couple super comp cars, and um, now we're running one's kind of good top dragster car. So we're uh, basically driving that one, and then the other one's going to be super comp. And Madison's driving it for now. Then um, I'm going to try my hand in that. Um, Christina really wants me to drive it. She thinks I'm going to have a hard time not driving something. So I'm I don't know that to be the case, but she she knows me pretty well. So probably that's probably so. So uh, I'll probably drive that here or there, and um, uh, maybe maybe swap totally, or maybe me and Maddie will share it. I don't know. We'll just see how it goes, but. I know I'll be racing something and be part of the team still. And that is not an uncommon sentiment to hear for sure. Um, now, at the beginning of this interview, we kind of alluded to the fact that this is one of a few episodes we're doing that kind of shines a light on the future up and coming generation of, of motorsports enthusiasts, whether it's drag racing, motocross, autocross, whatever. So um, as a successful racer yourself, do you have any advice to those potential up and coming racers? 
Uh, you know, I don't know that I have too much advice. I mean, other than I say, I think it's a, I think it's a great sport. I think it's a, uh, a very uh, family oriented sport that has a lot of opportunities to, um, to make things great for your family. Uh, especially it's done, it's done that for mine. I mean, it really has kept, kept me out of trouble. It's kept my kids out of trouble. I mean, my kids have just been phenomenal and they look at other kids out there that are vaping, that are doing drugs, that are doing all these different things. And they're like, no, 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 I'm not doing any of that. Cause I mean, I want to race and I got, I have something. And you say, whether it's drag racing or whether it's soccer, whether it's travel volleyball or whether it's whatever, you have to have something to, to want to be passionate about. And, you know, um, drag racing is what we chose to be passionate about. I think, I say, I think it's a great sport and I think it's a great, thing to be passionate about you know but i think it just is the youth needs to be passionate about something and have something to drive towards and then you know when you have something that you strive to want to have that it helps make uh helps get helps helps make you you know be good you know and i think drag racing is i mean it's it's fun it's exciting it's competitive and you get to drive a really fast car so I, i think it's a great choice And I couldn't imagine a better note to end on than that. Uh, Thank you, Doug, for taking the time to talk with us. We've been speaking with uh, Doug Gordon, two-time NHRA Top Alcohol Funny Car Championship winner, all about his racing career and and perhaps more importantly, the way his family's involved, his family connections, both uh, between him and his father and, and his daughters. So, Doug, again, thank you so much for your time and good luck to you, your daughters, and your race team in the future. All right, cool. Thanks very much, Paul. This has been the On All Cylinders podcast. Powered by Summit Racing. Check out new episodes coming soon at onallcylinders.com. Onallcylinders.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time.